welcome everyone to Preston for the first round of the 3A District Playoffs between the Crescent Panthers and your Harlan Community Cyclones. Shane, it is cold, very cold tonight. Uh, good playoff weather. Yeah, it's a little chilly. Uh, definitely going to be uh, hard football flying through the air. We'll see how much passing happens. Creston coming in here, ranked number one, Shane. The last time we were here, Harlan unfortunately fell to a bad spot, fell down 25-22 to 22 against the Panthers. Shane coming into the game, a lot of question marks around, is Lucas Francis going to be going? Shane, to clear it up, Sears suited, has been practicing. Uh, Lucas Francis is back. Harlan almost back to full power. Yeah, really just missing Franz Rice as uh, he's got that broken foot he's dealing with. Um, that's definitely a key loss, but always good to have uh, two of your more dynamic players back on the offense. Shane, they kind of kept this, you know, hidden, so I don't know if they were trying to catch Creston off, uh, off guard with not releasing Sears coming back, but nonetheless, this should be a great matchup, Shane. Harlan, I do believe this is playoff appearance number 42 for this program. Just an unreal amount of yeah. appearances. And, you know, they don't lose a lot you know, in the 38-3. <laughs> and very rarely do we see a loss in the first round. I think we went how many years, Shane, without losing in the first round? Yeah, so it uh, looks like Harlan won the toss, and they're going to defer to the second half. So uh, Harlan's going to be kicking off to the Panthers to start the game. And, Shane, like always, Harlan faithful, traveled well, Creston selling out their side. It is kind of the same atmosphere we saw the first time these two met. And just like always, Shane, Harlan very, very good when they see another opponent for the second time. Almost almost unbeatable with, with this coaching staff. If they see you again, it, uh, it makes it 10 times harder. Yeah, it's uh, always difficult to beat an opponent twice in a season. And uh, Harlan, fortunate enough to be on the winning side of that a lot. Uh, we're definitely going to have to see these Cyclones get off to a quicker start than they did the last time we were down here. Absolutely. And Shane, uh, prior to all the injuries, Shane, Harlan had 33 different starters this year. So almost seeing them back to full power and just when he needed it to because Creston has always kind of given us trouble, but nonetheless... Harlan, almost full power. This is going to be a great matchup. Yeah, excited tonight as uh, Elmer starts to get ready to start the game right now. And we are underway with 3A playoffs, and this will be in the back for a touchback. Ooh. As a, kind of a muffed kick there out of the back of the end zone. That's going to be whistled for a touchback. So good position for this Harlan defense, Shane, having the Panthers start on their own 20. But this offense is no slouch either for Creston. Uh, from Hayes to Turner, Shane, uh, this is a very dangerous offense if, uh, if you don't take them serious. Yeah, uh, Brennan Hayes, obviously the main focal point of this Creston offense. And Harlan had some had some uh, good, good stoppage the first game, had a good stop right there, Shane, but kind of really contained Brennan Hayes the first time we played. Uh, and like you said, it's only going to get harder uh, the second time around. Yeah, Harlan uh, did, didn't allow much. I mean, right there, just a three-yard gain, it looked like. Yep. So second and seven, ball on the 23, and this will be a run up the middle again, and he'll get to the sticks. And more. Yeah, we saw him run through an arm tackle from Van Bala, who's still playing with that cast on his arm. Uh, it's hard for him to wrap up a little bit. We're going to have to see a uh, little better tackling from the Cyclones. As we, uh, Shane, they were going for the strip there, so Harlan's kind of seen how, he, how he's hanging onto the ball. And this will be a pass complete for maybe five. 
pass is complete to Brandon Brolin. A gain of five yards. Yeah, that one's Brandon Briley on the five-yard catch there. Uh, just a little out route. Again, uh, that's kind of what was working against the Cyclones last time is, you know, we generally see the Cyclones in soft coverage on their corners. So second and five, ball on the 41, and we'll get a flag on the play. Uh, it's a timeout, a timeout for out. Creston. Early timeout from Creston. And uh, I guess... Maybe get that done in the first first half, Shane, but uh, you don't want to start burning them in the first quarter. Yeah, it's uh, you know 11 minutes left. Kind of early to be burning timeouts. <laughs> Absolutely, but uh, Shane, you can kind of hear the wind over the microphone. It is cold. I wish we were in a booth, but we are tip top of the bleachers. Yeah, we do not get that luxury as the away <laughs> team. <laughs> but nonetheless, we are set to take the field again. Second and five for Creston. Ball on the 41 coming out of their first time out. Yeah, and we'll see uh, the Panthers run a lot of shotgun tonight. They don't go under center hardly at all. Yeah, you're right, Shane. We saw that quite a bit. Uh, and both offenses, um, Shane, they kind of live and die on the quick strike. Not a lot of uh, big drives from each offense. It's really kind of quick strike. We're going to see some Wildcat here. This just looks to be Hayes on the keeper. He's going to get the edge, and he's going to get through and Man. just past the 50 down to the 40. Yeah, Van Bala with the tackle. It looked like he kind of sucked uh, sucked the line into the middle with that fake run upside and then got the edge and big gain, unfortunately. So kind of a a late shift shade to the to the Wildcat kind of hard, caught Harlan off guard, but first and ten ball in the forty, and they'll look to the air here, kind of a little snap. Turner, he's got his man, and this will be incomplete. Joseph rise on the coverage there, um, running with Hayes down the field. Yeah, it kind of looked like he almost got beat there, Shane, but he's got the reach advantage. Uh, kind of the nice wingspan there was able to get the hand in late. Yeah, and, uh, Joseph is a very tall kid, and he's got some size to him. <laughs> so second and ten, ball in the 40 after the incompletion. Uh, this will be a pass to the flat there, and he'll get enough for the first down. So that'll be enough to move the sticks for Creston and Shane, their first offensive drive, they're going right down the field. Yeah, these are a lot of plays uh, we didn't really see the first time. Uh, they're moving the quarterback, kind of a read option with the running back uh, leaking out for a pass. And this will be Hayes up the middle and he'll get up ended inside the five. Kind of a big hit there for Hayes. But nonetheless, that'll be enough for a first down. It'll be first and goal, ball on the four. Yeah, we saw a good job of contain from the defensive end for the Cyclones. Unfortunately, uh, Hayes just able to get inside him and up, up the field. And they're lined up in a kind of push formation. They'll motion out. And he's going to roll out to the far side. He's going to look back and incomplete. As I don't know if that was tipped at the. I, I don't. I think it's just him falling away, throwing off his back foot. Um, they're going with the late motion to try and confuse Harlan, and it did a little bit as Briley was open in the back of the end zone. Uh, just, Shane, this just offense, a poor just throw. Different schemes, you know, line up in one, shift to another. It's a. Uh, it's going to kind of confuse anybody and and Creston. Uh, Find out something's working. Yeah, it seems like they're going with uh, a lot of pre-snap motion to kind of get in Harlan's head a little bit. As we have a different quarterback in now. It looks like another Wildcat, and he'll be short of the goal line. Yeah, they're going to stop. Harlan stops him short. So that was uh, kid went under center, and they snapped it all the way through his legs back to the H-back. <laughs> 
for the Cyclones. It's third but Harlan on the, the stop Panthers. and third and goal from the one. Uh, Harlan could use a big stop here. Absolutely. Never want to go down on your first drive, and they're going to give it to Hayes, yeah. and he's going to get in there for the end zone. Ready. Touchdown, Creston. Yeah, again, tough ask. I think he pretty much knew that one was going to Hayes uh, as he's the focal point for their offense. So Harlan, uh, unfortunately, gives up the first points of the game, and we'll see uh, what this field goal block unit can do and then the Harlan offense coming out onto the field. Shane, that'll, that'll be a different offensive uh, look than what uh, everybody's been seeing the last three, four weeks. As he makes the extra point to make it 7 nothing, Harlan got quite a few kids through there on that, though, so uh, that's something to watch out for. Panther 7, Cyclone 0. So we'll hope to see this Harlan offense come out and uh, get going a little quicker than they did last week against Knoxville. Uh, as it took about a quarter for them to yeah. kind of find their form. And yeah, Shane, uh, first round of the playoffs uh, against the number one team, you can't have that, got to go now, already down seven. Yeah, and you know, we talked to Coach Blatt a little bit at halftime against Knoxville, uh, Coach Kurt Blatt, and uh, he, his big thing was playoffs roll around, you got to have everything, have everything tightened up. Right, and for the most part, Shane, It'll be interesting to see this uh, Harlan offense. And Shane, we haven't seen Harlan at full power since about homecoming. Yeah, I believe against Perry is when most of the injuries happened. So 7 to nothing, 9.38 to go here in the first quarter. Creston will kick it away. And this will be a high kick. It'll be returned past the 20. I believe that was Braden Eggers on the return there. So good starting position for this offense, Shane. Uh, and like you said at the beginning, cold weather, how how many times are you going to put it in the air? Yeah, I think uh, we saw Preston only put it in the air a few times, and most of them were short throws, uh, not really going long. They went one long pass. Um, Harlan's offense uh, definitely on the ground was the strength the last time we were here. Right. Uh, Lucas Francis was kind of... You know, the big spark here. He is back in for the Cyclones. And this will be Lucas Francis there. And he's a big hit right away. Yeah, runs through the first tackle. And I think he gained about three yards there. And one of the big things, Shane, is that 14 coming back on the field. Sears back from the first time since out homecoming. Yeah, uh, I think he sat out the homecoming game. Yeah, uh, he was dressed. Dressed, but he sat out. But Eggers has uh, stepped in and filled nicely, as well as Joseph Rice. Yeah, second and seven for the Cyclones, and this will be Bendorf, I believe, yeah. on the carry. Yeah, Brian, that's that little fullback stretch play we saw Harlan <laughs> fall in love with against Knoxville. And... I mean, why not when it's uh, when it's getting you <laughs> third and two? Yeah, he had five yards on that one. You know, we have seen that all all year this year. Uh, fullback carries have gotten Harlan three to five yards. As Bendorf comes off late, so third and two, just over eight to go here in the first quarter. As Harlan's also going to burn a timeout. Uh, looks like a little miscommunication from the Cyclones there. So while they take a break, we'll take a break. You're watching HLTV Channel 15. Local Cyclone coverage on HLTV Channel 15 is brought to you by Keist Auto Center in Harlan, Iowa. Hanson House Senior Living. Experience life, experience Hanson House. Conducting Swampler is a proud supporter of the Harlan community, education, and student activities. We move your business forward. United Bank of Iowa, the difference is here, member FDIC. Polly Jones Funeral Home, longtime supporter of Harlan community athletics and events. We're at your station for Western Iowa sports. Cool Goal 105.3 FM, Tano D in Harlan, Iowa. 
Family, Service, Community, SCSB. Dr. J's Family Eye Care, longtime supporter of Cyclone Sports in Harlan. Peterson Family Wellness Center and Lewis Family Aquatic Complex, live well. Cyclone Lanes, great family entertainment, including bowling, sandwiches, and homemade buttercrust pizzas. So welcome back to HL TV Channel 15. Just over eight minutes to go here in the first quarter, Shane. Seven nothing, Creston over your Harlan Community Cyclones. Looking at a third and two. As this will be Lucas Francis here to the edge. And he's going to get enough. Yeah, he falls forward for a first down. You know, we've talked about that consistently. Uh, these Harlan running backs fall forward. Yeah, and uh, they had Matthew Sorfenden out there uh, lined up as a receiver blocking. And uh, he gave just enough room there on the edge to where they can get the first down. Yeah, Lucas with a good carry. And, yeah, Sorf coming in and getting that seal block. First and 10 now, ball in the 43. Harlan's going to keep it on the ground. Lucas Francis right up the middle, almost enough for the first down. And you know, it's going to be right at the stick, Shane. Uh, yeah, it looks like they're going to give it to him. You know, Brian, this uh, this looks like the spark that Harlan was missing against uh, Knoxville, Atlantic, right. you know, teams like that. Um, just that explosive run. You know, we've seen Noah Schmidt's kind of banged up lately. And Shane, I mean, uh, it just kind of we haven't seen this for a while for this Harlan offense, so it's kind of taken everybody by surprise almost. Yeah, as uh, we have Schmitz and Sorf uh, lined up wide to block. And Lucas Francis gets maybe back to the line on that one. Yeah. Uh, Very well sought out by the Creston. Francis with the carry on first down. Yeah, Back Creston read that play ball. really well. So second and 12 now, loss of two yards on that one. Harlan has the ball on the 49. As this would be a run play up the middle and maybe back to the original line of scrimmage, Shane. But we're looking at maybe a third and an 11 from the Cyclones. He gains a yard for the Cyclones. Curve. First on the tackle for the Panthers, it's third. So kind of putting Harlan in a situation where we got to throw the ball now. Yeah. Uh, you kind of would rather have them not expect a pass play here, Shane, but nonetheless, Harlan has the talent to get there. Uh, Sears is out there, Rise, Eggers. Harlan looking to put it in the air, and Arkfeld's going to have to keep it, and he's going to be short as Arkfeld got flushed out of the pocket, thought he had some room, and... It'll be a fourth down for the Cyclones. Yeah, as that was uh, Will Bollinger kind of just wrapping up Arkfeld's leg. Uh, so, otherwise, Arkfeld had a lot of room. Yeah, to he run. had daylight there. And, um, fourth and five, the Harlan offense stays on the field. And this early in the game, Shane, you don't convert here. This could be uh, could be problems, but Harlan pretty confident that they can get this first down. And Arkfeld looks to put it in the air. He's going to get Eggers, and it'll be incomplete. So a very low pass from Arkfeld will fall incomplete. And Harlan turns it over on downs here in the first quarter of 5.02 to go. Trailing 7 nothing. Yeah, we'll put, uh, putting this defense back out on the field. Uh, they're not in bad shape. They've, they've got plenty of field to work with. It's not necessarily too short of a field. As Turner looks to, looks to throw, and he'll just have to throw this away. He was flushed out of the pocket, Shane. And Shane, a lot of, a lot of the fans out here kind of want to hold. I didn't see it. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see a hold. Uh, 
A lot of the Cyclone fans saw it. As we've already seen better play calling than we did the last time we were here. Hayes will get the call and he'll get almost the first down as he's going to broke be, a couple tackles. Yeah, he's going to be a couple yards short, um, but Harlan's definitely going to need to strengthen up that run defense up the middle. So third and three for the Panthers and this Harlan D needs to kind of D up a little bit and Shane, if, uh, if there's a defense to answer the call all season, it's Ben Harlan. So send a man in motion, and this will be Hayes. And yeah, I think he kick. fell forward for a first down there. Does it look like he was slowed down at the line, Shane? But like he said, a little, little jump forward, and he falls enough. That's good for a Panther. First down at the 47-yard line of Harlan. So it'll be first and 10, ball in the 47. Crescent looks to put it in the air. And this will be complete in the middle of the field there. Yeah, Quinn Kester's on the tackle, just a little late on the break. He had the read right, just saw it late. On the tackle for the Cyclones, he's brought down at the 32 yard line and that's good for another Panther. So first and 10, ball in the 32 for Creston. And they'll send another man in motion. And this will be a fake read play, Shane. Dumped off in the flat there. Yeah, so they're going with a kind of a read option and then pass, keep play. Uh, Harlan's just losing the man right there. There's uh, no one really there to cover. Uh, number five for the Panthers, Josh I mean, Schaefer. Uh, Shane, that was uh, that had me fooled. I thought Hayes had that from the from the get go. Yeah, uh, that was a it was a good fake, that's for sure. So again, first and ten, ball in the seventeen for Creston. As this will be Hayes this time. I was gonna say this one is to Hayes. Brad and Hayes with a carry on first down. It's a gain of six yards. That'll be a gain of six yards. So it'll be second and four so for Creston. Again, a lot of pre-snap movement for the Panthers. <clears throat> a little this will reverse. Be a double end around here, and he's got Turner in the end zone. Touchdown, Creston, Shane. And that was an end around to another end around and completed back to the quarterback in the in the end zone for a touchdown. So 13 yeah. nothing, Creston. That was Weston Trap uh, getting the ball and throwing it to Cale Turner. And Cale Turner, Shane, was kind of up in the air and whether he was going to go tonight. Uh, but first round of the playoffs, you're facing Harlan. You got to go. And this kick is good. Makes this one of, as well. And Shane, I'm kind of glad it's too cold for fireworks out here because I'm guessing there'd be a lot of them by now. Yeah, again, uh, we saw this last time we were up here. Harlan just a uh, little slow to start, but they usually get it get it together and kick it in gear. Yeah, Harlan uh, down 15 nothing last the last time we were up in Creston, came back, tied it, I do believe, 15 all. And then ended up, no, it was 22, 22 all, and then eventually falling short to a questionable spot there, but never count Harlan out no matter how, how far you're up on the board. Yeah, and again, last time we were up here, uh, the officials were very active with flags. <laughs> and I think we, we have yet to see one. In the kickoff for the Panthers, number 45, Brennan Hayes. So Brennan Hayes kicks it away. and. Nice kick from Hayes. So be fielded at about the 10. And he's going to get past, I do believe, the 20 again, Shane. Almost to the 30. That was Eggers with the return for the Cyclones. Haynes on the tackle for the Panthers. It'll be first and 10 for Harlan at the 28 yard line. So Harlan taking over first and 10 at the 28. Uh, we'll see what this offense comes out with. 
as it was run heavy the first offensive uh, drive Shane um, maybe we'll see some pass play but uh, we, we were moving on the on the ground so no problem there and this will be a little touch pass to Lucas Francis and he's gonna slip and fall forward for maybe about two yeah, and that's too bad because he had a lot of green space in front of him uh, got on the right side of that block and I think he probably would have been off to the races yeah he uh, unfortunately just before he made the cut back inside Shane just feet went out from underneath him so second and ten ball on the 28 they didn't give him any anything on that run just over two to go here in the first quarter as Harlan will look to throw he's got Eggers wide open and just missed him Herkfeld with a great look at his ball there and had uh, kind of everybody had the run sold, Shane. Everybody kind of thought that was going on the ground. And Eggers was right there just out of reach. And Shane, that would have been six all the way. Yeah, that was uh, probably a half to a full step just past Eggers. And again, uh, that's one you're going to want in a game like this. Uh, so nonetheless, now third and 10, ball in the 28. Arlen in the shotgun, they look to throw. And he'll be flushed out to the far side there. He's gonna have to just give it away. And this will be complete. And I do believe that's Landon Kaufman. He's gonna go all the way, touchdown, that, Arlen. What a great job by Arkfeld, scrambling and keeping his eyes open down up downfield to see Kaufman just Absolutely. behind the defender. Absolutely, he laid it in there, Shane, only Landon Kaufman was going to get that. And Harlan on the board. And Shane, what do we call that? Elite ball placement, Mr. Martin. We've seen it all year from Markville. Again, and, and that, that might be the spark that this offense needs. A huge pass play. And Harlan on the board. So 14 to 6. Creston leads Harlan. Nolan Schwery looking to put it through. And it is come. Good, so Harlan now 14 to seven. Crawling back in this, Shane, we just said, never count out the Cyclones, and Harlan's quick strike. Yeah, this is an offense that uh, you can't really lay off. He's he, You gotta keep engaged the entire time. Yeah, uh, first drive it was keep it on the ground, see if we can move it on the ground. Preston thought they had it. Uh, two plays in a row, Shane, they sold the run. Crescent kind of bit on the flats on that last play, and like you said, just had Kaufman right behind the secondary. Yeah, and again, again, uh, that's also a great job from Kaufman, Kaufman working across the field uh, for his quarterback, getting into his line of sight. Yeah, I mean, uh, Arkfield kind of running for his life, still looking downfield, and it's important for those receivers to keep running. So we'll see Elmer Argueta out here uh, to kick it deep. This will be kind of a little short kick. And he'll be tripped up just at the 30. Uh, they're going to mark him at the 29, I believe. 0 oh for 1. We're used to it by now, Brian. Almost. <laughs> this far into the season with your record, we're used to it. <laughs> Maybe next year. So we'll see. Uh, <laughs> See this defense move that brought some life into them. See if we can't get a stop. At, uh, facing the number one team in the district, Shane. Uh, it's usually the roles reversed. Uh, Arlen's usually the number one. So uh, we'll see kind of another read off or a wildcat here. Hayes will get maybe five as he's. Uh, that's about it, Shane. Is that going to give him a? Very favorite spot there. He, he did get about five there. Uh, Harlan pulled him back afterwards, but they're going to give him six, second and four. Ball on the 35. And this will be Hayes again, and he's. That is not Hayes. That was uh, Weston Trap. 
They motioned uh, Hayes out of the backfield, thought maybe they'd do a little pull throw out wide to him, but uh, they'll get the first down through trap. So first and 10, ball on the 40. By the time this is snap, Shane, about a minute to go in the first quarter. And Turner's gonna look to throw. And he's gonna put it in the air, and it'll be caught. Complete down, almost by the, the 20, Shane. He's in maybe about the 25. Yeah, that's something we can't really afford to give up is those deep passes down the field. Nissen was on the tackle for the Cyclones. That big play is good for a Panther. So first and 10, ball on the 25. And this will be another keeper. And it'll be a touchdown. So touchdown, Preston, as they answer Harlan seven with a seven of their own. Yeah, Har Harlan's got to figure something out on that play. Is uh, that that has motion man seems to be open every play. Well, the, I mean the read option, the Hayes, like really the center of attention has been Hayes, Shane, and when you keep it and then just dump it off to the flat. Uh, Really no answer for it right now. As that is up and in. I mean, yeah, you gotta be wary of Hayes up the middle, but uh, you gotta have, I, I don't know, it looks like we're playing man coverage and no one's going with that guy. So 21 to seven, 34 seconds to go here in the first quarter as Harlan struck on their last offensive drive, Shane, but Creston, something you don't wanna see, they answered the call pretty quick. Yeah, uh, not much resistance from this normally stout Harlan defense. Uh, uh, Creston just calling a good sequence of plays right there. I thought maybe got away with a little bit of hold on, uh, I believe it was Kaufman trying to break through to make the tackle, but not called, and it's a Creston touchdown. So as Brennan Hayes set to kick it away for the Panthers. As this is... A booming kick down the field. And Eggers has got some room there. And he's going to be down. Great starting position for this Harlan offense. Yeah, much much needed return there. As Eggers gets wide, uh, he gets forced back in, but gets us out to the 37. Harlan will take over. First and 10, ball in the 37. Harlan trailing 14 points here. As we see Sears lined up here to the near side. Um, hasn't really been looking his way. I don't know if he's out there for a distraction or or what, but Harlan will put it on the ground. This Lucas Francis will be met in the backfield. Yeah, Creston blew that play up from the snap. There was uh, no room for was that Lucas? I think that was Bendorf that took that the handoff. That was Bendorf, sorry. Uh, Francis with the carry on. It was down. Francis. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, uh, there was no room to run. And that will do it for the first quarter. So they will switch sides and we'll be right back. You're watching HLTV Channel 15. At United Bank of Iowa, the difference is here. Conveniently located at the corner of Highway 59 and Pine Street in Harlan, you'll always find a smiling face to greet you and help you with all your banking needs. We offer competitive rates on deposits and loans and the latest in technology with our online and mobile products. Come and find out for yourself why the difference is here at United Bank of Iowa. Member FDIC. Welcome back, folks, as we get ready to start the second quarter. Uh, Creston up 21 to seven. Cyclones with second and 11 from the 36. And Shane, new quarter, but still freezing out here. <laughs> as Harlan uh, looks to be in the I formation under center. They'll put Sears in motion. And they've got Sears. And he's gonna go to Sears and just out of reach. As he had Sears, like you said, Shane, and just out of his reach. And so Sears be... coming up a little bit gimpy there. Pass intended for Sears, falls incomplete. 
So third and 11, ball on the 36. And Shane, that was kind of his first target tonight. He, uh, he's been kind of a decoy out there, but like you said, he had his man beat just, just out of his reach. Third and 11 for the Cyclones. There's a look to the air. And, and we're going to get a pass interference there. It will uh, be incomplete, but yeah, Joseph Rice. Uh, I, I sure hope that is on Creston because if it's on us, uh, that's going to be a new, new low for this. <laughs> So yes, Brian, it's gonna be pass interference on Creston. Uh, Joseph gets the cornerback on a good double move. Uh, bowls him over, but, <laughs> but uh, clearly interfered with as he could not get to the ball for the catch. All right, slowed him up just enough. And it'll be first and 10 for the Cyclones. So something falling for Harlan's way here through the penalty and this could be new life for the Cyclones. This would be Lucas Francis up the middle, still going almost to the sticks there, Shane. Yeah, and you gotta love a good, tough runner like Lucas right now, uh, fighting for every inch, holding onto the ball well. Second and three, ball in the 42. Arkfeld sends Sorf in motion, and Ooh, that's going to be to Francis. Yeah, he's got the edge, Shane, and Lucas Francis, once he gets the edge, Shane, very hard to either catch or bring down. Yeah, uh, I'm wondering right now, uh, Harlan's moving out, uh, Sorf out to receiver and motion him in. Uh, one of these times you got to be expecting kind of a play action there, otherwise it's going to be easy to key on if we're handing the ball off there. Right. Uh, but first and 10 for the Cyclones. And Harlan marching on this drive, Shane. As we see Sorf split on the near sideline. As this will be a handoff to Lucas Francis again, and maybe two yards before he's met by the Francis Creston defense. With the carry on first down, he gains a couple yards. Bollinger on the tackle for the Panthers. It'll be second down at eight. The ball's at the 25 yard line. So second and eight, ball in the 25. Uh, Arkville under center. And this will be Bendorf and unfortunately he is met right at the line, Shane kind of took his feet away from him. So third and eight, ball, third and seven, excuse me, ball in the 24. As again, Shane, now we're looking at a pass play from the Cyclones. Yeah, and uh, gotta be four down territory as uh, Harlan hasn't trotted out the field goal unit a lot this year. As Arkfeld will look to throw, he's going to have to go he's to the far side. He's got a lane to run. And yeah, he's got inside the 10, Shane. Is, that was a great kind of check down and the shift of the field. And Arkfeld has kind of done that all year, Shane. Just nothing's downfield, check it down, try to get some yardage. And he got a huge chunk of yards there for the Cyclones. Yeah. Uh, Again, he, he went through his progressions, did a really good job of doing that, and then um, found the backside that was left completely wide open. Yeah, I mean, he had every receiver going to the near side, turn around, went to the far side, nobody's there. Easy first down for the Cyclones, and now Arkfeld 
under center. And this will be Lucas Francis. And DeCreston dialing up a good blitz right there as uh, Francis not able to get anything going. So it'll be second and seven. Francis with the carry on first Ball and goal for the on Cyclones. the Lucas seven. Travis yeah, so it's second and goal. Second and seven. It's because they can't put goal on the scoreboard, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> So second and goal, ball on the seven. Harlan in the I formation under center. They'll send Swarf out there. And this will be a pitch to Lucas Francis. And he's gonna be just short. Just short. Francis with the carry on second. As goal. that was set up very well in that little speed option. Uh, Arkfeld sees the pitch well and Francis gets the corner, just uh, can't quite get that seal block on the outside to open up the lane for the uh, touchdown. And Shane, I mean, they're bringing Swarf in mainly just for the, the bulldozer effect. And it's it's working. He's been he's been opening some lanes here. So first and goal, or third and goal, excuse me, ball on the one for Harlan. Yeah, got to be looking for a QB sneak right here. And that's exactly it. And that'll be in there for the touchdown. Will Arkfeld, one yard keeper, will put seven, six more on the board for the Cyclones. Yeah, as these Cyclones are not going to go down without a fight. Uh, that's the one thing we can guarantee is they will fight till the end. Absolutely. Uh, and for Creston, um, yeah, this is the first round, but what a, what a kind of a, a bad draw here, Shane. You, you get the two-time defending champion first week in the playoffs. Yeah, again, Harlan, never an easy game and probably a team you always want to try to avoid in the playoffs. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Nolan Schwery looking to make it 21-14, and this will be good. So Nolan Schwery makes it 14 for the Cyclones as they trail the Crescent Panthers now 21-14. So if you were slated to have this a low scoring game, Shane, uh, you were wrong because both teams lighten up the scoreboard. Yeah, you got, I mean, much nicer weather the last time we were here <laughs> and it was 25 to 22 for a final. We are basically there and we still have seven and a half minutes left in the second quarter. Yeah, and Shane, my feet are kind of hoping for a continuous clock, but you got a ways to go for that. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna see that tonight. <laughs> no. Uh, my my little tootsies are also kind of frozen. <laughs> we did dress warm. It's just you're up here with no uh, no break of the wind, and we're feeling all of it. The wind has died down a little bit. <laughs> that did not make the sun come out and warm up the, the night, though. Nope. But this is prime playoff weather, as we have a prime game here between Creston and Harlan. And, and that's going to check up. And this will be returned and... Yeah, uh, just past 25. Yeah, great little uh, tackle the right there Sorfenden. by Sorfenden. He actually came up with the football machine. So. <laughs> Again, uh, it's unreal how much this kid just flies around the field. Yeah, we saw him, I think, block every extra point that Knoxville tried and just kind of did it with ease and tried it back to the sideline. Uh, Swarf really makes his position look effortless and yeah. uh, <laughs> that's kind of a nice quality to have. As we're going to go back to Wildcat and probably see a Brennan Hayes run right up the middle. Oh, and wide snap. Bad snap. And Hayes is going to try to do something with it and he's going to get swallowed up way in the backfield. And that is something you cannot afford in a, in a game like this. Harlan's yeah. finally got the momentum and you're just going to add on to it. Right. And uh, and Shane, they answered the, the quick score last week, or last drive, and now you're giving up 13 yards on a bad snap, putting on the 15. That's the last thing you want to do is give this defense any momentum. Yeah, and we're going to need to see the safeties back on this one. As Turner's looking to throw, and it'll be and intercepted. he finds a man, he just happens to be wearing white. <laughs> and I do believe, Shane, that's Matthew Sorfin in. Uh, on no, the interception. That, that was Joseph Rice. Joseph Rice, excuse me, on the interception. But, Shane, you are 
right. He had his man wide open. It just was a cyclone. Yeah. Again, uh, he rolled out, tried to find some time, uh, found some time, found an open man. Uh, the open man just on the other team. <laughs> so Harlan getting great field position here. First and 10, ball in the 27. And like we said, Shane, you have Harlan with the momentum offensively. You give him a huge defensive sack, and now the turnover, that's the last thing you need is giving Harlan full momentum here. Yeah, again, in a playoff situation like this, Harlan uh, getting that. Harlan looking to pass. Arkfield's going to be flushed out. And he's going to just get rid of this. Ooh, Sears almost, almost, almost it. brings it down. And he's again, he's a little slow to come up. Uh, he's still playing Sears. with a, a bruised complete. bone in his in his leg, Shane. So uh, kudos to him for still going out there and, and playing. Yeah, he's gotten it out, but at the same time, you might want to kind of dial it back a little bit because you don't want it to get worse. There are still hopefully more playoff games in the future. So second and 10, ball in the 27. Ark felt the lone man in the backfield. He's going to pump fake and go up the middle. And that'll be a nice gain there, right up the middle. Yeah, a creative way to get a little quarterback run right there. Uh, a little Arkfell. pump fake draw up the middle. With the keeper for the Cyclones, Staver brings him down at the 24 Third and line. seven. It's third down. And third down at seven for the Cyclones. Again, this is going to more than likely be four down territory for the Cyclones all night. And that's nothing against Nolan Schwer because he yeah. won a game with him before. Yeah, he's, uh, a, he's a good kicker. It's just uh, Harlan likes to keep the offense out there and get the touchdowns. So third and seven, ball in the 24. They'll look to the air. And he'll have to check it down again, and he's going to get sacked. As Preston had kind of everybody covered there, Shane, and he unfortunately just had to go down there. So fourth and seven. Gonna bring up fourth down at nine. Yeah, so two yard fourth loss, and nine, fourth and nine. Me. Brian's out here 0 for two. Twenty-seven <laughs> right. um, yard loss. Yeah, he, I, it looked like they were running a little curl route and uh, just didn't have enough time to see it through. So here. I mean, we've seen it a lot this year. Uh, what I what I imagine we might throw is a corner to Eggers. I love uh, that little post corner out to Eggers. And he'll look to the air, and he's got Rice there in the end zone. And caught. Just short, Just of, the short of the end zone, zone, but it is caught for a first down. Joseph Rice on the and wheel roll. roll. Again, Rice is one of those people that just kind of has that size. Yeah, he's, and, he's a big uh, kid. Arkfeld just throwing it up for him to go get it. Just had to come back or slow down a little bit there, Shane. But nonetheless, Harlan in business inside the five on the three. So first and goal for the Cyclones. And Arkfeld's going to get Arkfeld's the... Arkfeld's walking in there. He Gunning. had to have been by at least been in by at least a yard. It looked like from and here. And no signal they're, yet. They're whistling it down at the one. As he had the uh, had the tush push there, Shane, and I thought he got plenty. Yeah. So I mean, if we're not seeing a, a another QB sneak, <laughs> not sure. So second and goal, ball on the one. Shane, he uh, like you said, walked in the end zone, but. Down at the one, apparently. You know, I mean, it, from here it's hard to tell. I'm guessing uh, Arkfeld just kind of got caught up with the linemen, couldn't get the ball extended over the line. And I don't think he got that one either, Shane. No, they they shot the gap there, and uh, he maybe got back to the line. Goal. Chapman with the tackle for loss. It'll be third and goal for the Cyclones. So third and one, Shane, ball on the one. And after the interception, you have to put points up on the board. Yeah, this is not a, especially having it at the one, this is not an area you can't come away with points from. Uh, Got to see the touchdown here. And 
I do believe I, I, this time. I, I, on, I still don't understand how he's not getting in. We have the ball on the one. <laughs> he's getting past the line. And Again, it's hard to tell from this angle. I, I will say down. that, but they spot him at the inch yard line, apparently. And it'll be four. He's, looks like he's been moving about three yards, Shane, but they're still saying short. So fourth and one. Ball on the one. Yeah, uh, Will. I, I'm pretty sure Will scored two touchdowns on this drive alone. <laughs> so here we go. We're gonna try this again. Fourth and goal for the Cyclones. And there's this no time, way he's not in. <laughs> there is literally no way he's not in the end zone. And They'll put him okay. up finally as Harlan finally gets in the end zone. Brian, there was a 0% <laughs> chance he did not get across the line there. <laughs> I mean, we saw him across the line the last three plays. but So, uh, Arkfeld so coming away with a touchdown on three out of four plays from the one, uh, but only gets counted as, once. As uh, the refs are kind of going for a dramatic theater here, Shane. Yeah, uh, they, they are doing their best, you know. Uh, last time down here, it was the penalties. This time, it's just let's not call a touchdown. 21-20, <laughs> and Nolan Schwery will make it 21-all as Harlan, down 14-0, Shane, has crawled back and tied it 21-21. Yeah, and you got to wonder what this does to a Crested Panther team that was probably coming in here full of confidence, goes up 14-0, and now they see it tied at 21. Yeah. This is playoff Harlan. It, it is, is not the same Harlan you get throughout the year. No, and Shane, it's uh, like we said, just your number one in the district, but your first draw is a, a Harlan team that got bit by an injury bug, and you know now you're, you know, gets in on the wild card, and that's your first opponent. And no matter what Harlan score is, they're still, they've been here before, Shane, 42 times in the playoffs. It's nothing new for the Cyclones. I mean, this is a, a Harlan team that's got players that have been to the playoffs, to the Dome, to the state championship three straight times. <laughs> uh, so they know what it's about. Right, right. and uh, do, correct me if I'm wrong, I do believe this is Creston's first time ever being number one in the district, so uh, but this will be well covered downfield chain on the kickoff. And Harlan pins him deep again. Yeah, uh, Elmer doing a good job of these little pooch kicks, checking yeah. it up. Uh, and he's getting the bounce the right way. Yeah, Creston's just having a hard time reading it. We kind of saw it in, in Knoxville, Shane. He was pooching them a little bit. A lot of muffed kickoffs in Knoxville. So uh, kind of an, like a, almost like a knuckle curve type <laughs> of kickoff. It just drops off the table. Yeah. And Creston going with the handoff to Hayes, I believe. And he's going to get some room here to the near side. Hayes with the carry on first down for the Panthers. And they'll mark him just short of the first down. So second and two. And they're at the 33. Just under two to go here in the also first half. Also second and one, Brian. What did I say? Two. And Hayes is going to be stacked up. He'll get the first down, but not much more. <laughs> kind of looked like the three plays that Harlan was in on the end zone there, Shane, but they call that a first down. That's good for a Panther. So first and 10, ball in the 35 as Creston looking to maybe either just take care of the ball or score before half. Kyle Turner looking... To throw downfield and just incomplete. What a defensive play by the Cyclones. Great coverage out there. Not That's Jackson Beaker on the coverage for the Cyclones. And he's got some speed, Shane. You saw the closing speed and got that hand in there late and will force the incompletion. Yeah, again, uh, living on the edge of a pass interference there, but uh, good tight defense. Yeah. Didn't get called, so that is a great play <laughs> from the Cyclones. As we'll see, Hayes again. And man, this kid, he just is a very good running back. As uh, We're going to have a timeout from the Panthers, and he gains about 
Five, six on that? Seven. 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 So that was third. the next number I was going to say. <laughs> so third and three. Uh, Creston takes a timeout. We will take a timeout. You are watching HLTV Channel 15. Back to HLTV Channel 15. Preston coming out of the timeout. Tied 21-21 as Harlan given everything this number one team can handle. So we've got a few seconds ticking down on the timeout clock. So here we are back in action. Third and three for the Panthers. And this will be a keeper. And he's got enough for the first down and more still on his feet inside the 40. And that, that's the danger of that play, Brian. Uh, we stayed out on the release man, uh, and Turner, Turner just keeps it and gains a chunk play. Uh, but, I mean, it, it's one of those double-edged stories. Do you give it up the middle or let him walk into the end zone like he did the last time? Uh, just a – it's almost – an unfair play, but Turner's going to look to the air again, and this will be incomplete as Sorf almost had it there yeah, in the middle. <laughs> just over Sorf's fingertips. And, man, if he would have made that play, Shane, that would have been just another one for the books for Matthew Sorf. Yeah, I'm sure he probably would have just jogged off the field nonchalantly. <laughs> so second and ten ball in the 37. Preston looking to try to put some points up on the board before going in the half. 46 seconds to go here as this will be a keeper and gets about two before Soma puts him on the ground. Yeah, Hayden Soma filling the gap nicely. And I believe Creston's taking their final time out of the half. As Shane Soma's kind of just been, the last three games has just been a wrecking ball in the I, backfield. I, you know, Brian, since uh, Franz went out, Hayden Soma has stepped up in a big way. Yeah, uh, Soma, and then uh, if he's covered, you got Sorf coming in there. Owen Neve, we've seen him a couple weeks just have big games. Uh, just, it just seems like no matter who's in or out for this defensive line, it's, it's not moving. Yeah, and I believe we also saw Hazy on the edge there, forcing it back up the middle. So when they come back on the field, Shane, it'll be third and eight on the 35. And Turner in the shotgun for Creston. Yeah, 38 seconds left in the half. This will send Hayes here to the near side. And, and Marlins lined up off sides here. Jackson yeah, Beaker. Jackson Beaker not watching the line. Uh, He's got, he's got the right idea, getting up pressed, just uh, didn't see where the line was. Oh, unfortunately, Shane, he was lined up exactly with the offensive line with Preston, and uh, right in front of the side official, so you're gonna get called. So it'll be third and three for Creston, as that is the first penalty of the game late in the second quarter. Just the first on Harlan, I believe. There was a pass interference yep. earlier in the game on Excuse Creston. Me, sorry, yep. It's all right to be wrong. You're used to it. <laughs> yes. yes, I am. And I really appreciate you reminding me week in and week out. <laughs> well, you wouldn't give me so many reminders. <laughs> Not really sure what we're waiting on here. Waiting on the officials. 
So here we go, 38 seconds left, third and three for the Panthers. As they'll go with that, these guys, man, and they'll be complete down to the one. And what a... So the clock will stop till the chains get set to um, not something you see in pro football anymore, but uh, it's not good for the Cyclones as it gives Creston time to get up. Right. And this will be Hayes, and he'll be in there for the touchdown. So 18 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Creston puts seven, six more on the board. So 27-21 now as Creston takes the lead right before the half. As Brennan Hayes looks to put it through. And almost gets blocked, but it'll be good. So 28-21 as Harlan will get it for 17 seconds. And then we'll get it coming back from the half, Shane. So that big pass play leading to the score, Shane, that was kind of just a jump ball. Harlan's defender had the hand on it. Just got wrestled away there. Uh, it was just strong hands from the Creston receiver, I believe. That was Briley on the catch. Um, just showing strong hands. Beaker couldn't get it poked out. So Eggers and Kaufman will set to return this kick. Shane, for the 17 seconds to go here in the first half. And what a game it's been, Shane. It's kind of been a barn burner back and forth. Offensively, 28-21 is your score. Creston leading. As this will be a deep kick, and he'll be a touchback. As yeah, so, when you step in the end zone in high school, it's an automatic touchback. So that'll be to the 20 with 16 seconds to go. If more than likely, we're going to see Harlan kind of just keep it on the ground, maybe going to the halftime. You got to imagine they'll kneel it, but a uh, game like this might see a shot play. You never know. Harlan again with that quick strike offense. Uh, you might see Eggers uh, get deep down the middle. And I mean. And Harlan gonna come out in the I formation. It looks like it Looks like they will knee. kneel it. So that'll be a knee and that'll be it for the first half, Shane. And one thing we haven't seen in the <laughs> uh, first half, Shane, is not a lot of plays that didn't end in a touchdown. And man, 28-21, what a game we have here. Harlan, unfortunately trailing by seven, but getting the ball coming into the sec or second half. Yeah, again, uh, not a bad position to be. You went in, went from down 14 nothing to tying it. Sucks to give up that last touchdown, but uh, it's something they can bounce back from. Yeah, and uh, if you're crested in kind of a reality check, uh, if you're trying to take Harlan lightly, Harlan came in here and they're giving you everything, and it's only going to get harder if you get past uh, Harlan. Yeah. So while they're at half, we will take a break. Thank you for watching HLTV Channel 15. Local Cyclone coverage on HLTV Channel 15 is brought to you by Keist Auto Center in Harlan, Iowa. Hanson House Senior Living. Experience life. Experience Hanson House. Conducting Swampler is a proud supporter of the Harlan community, education, and student activities. We move your business forward. United Bank of Iowa, the difference is here, member FDIC. Polly Jones Funeral Home, longtime supporter of Harlan community athletics and events. We're your station for Western Iowa sports. Cool Goal 105.3 FM, Tano D in Harlan, Iowa. Family, service, community, SCSB. Dr. J's Family Eye Care, longtime supporter of Cyclone Sports in Harlan. Peterson Family Wellness Center and Lewis Family Aquatic Complex, live well. Cyclone Lanes, great family entertainment, including bowling, sandwiches, and homemade buttercrust pizzas. 
Welcome back to HLTV Channel 15. And Shane about to start the second half. And what an exciting game this has been, Shane. A lot of the doubters uh, prior to this, this game, Shane, kind of on the internet and everything, saying Harlan not really having a chance. Uh, gave Glenn, or Creston 79% of the vote to win this, and Harlan really taking him to the brink. Yeah, again, uh, Harlan never a team to go down without a fight. Coming into this, playing against all odds, uh, I like their odds. <laughs> yeah, uh, like we've said many times, you know, Harlan's 42nd time being in the playoffs, Shane. They are 38-3 and in the playoffs. Yeah, uh, not many teams can claim to have such a good winning percentage in the playoffs, and if they do, probably because they aren't there very often. <laughs> Right, and uh, for Creston, coming in, I do believe for the first time, ranked number one in the district. A lot to come with that number one ranking, Shane. You got the, the bullseye on your back, it's a little bit bigger. Makes it a lot easier to make the mistakes. Yeah, not not to mention just uh, having that victory over Harlan earlier in the year. Uh, Harlan's always coming back for a vengeance if oh, you yeah. get one on him. Because, Shane, you can kind of go back, and Harlan and Creston, it's a historical matchup, and just throughout the years, it's just really been the type of game that kind of give Harlan fits and they always play Harlan rather well both teams do so it's really nothing new when you see these two play yeah I mean to me Brian uh I hear all I've heard of a lot of years uh Creston's so good Creston's this and then Harlan just comes in and wipes the floor with them this is not one of those years Creston no. is very good they, they are very good and um and this Harlan team is given every bit of it to match them and and you kind of wish this would be either played in the dome or closer to the winner gets the dome. Kind of crazy that we're seeing this week, first week of the, the playoffs, but that's just the way the seeding went. Yeah, uh, this is definitely not one you like to see first round. <laughs> um, these are two top teams in the state, not two of the top. There, There's a, a lot of good teams in the state, but Around these two district. should definitely be closer towards the semifinals. <laughs> right. Uh, just, I think if Harlan would have came out on top in Nevada, this one would possibly be a, a week two, maybe a semifinals matchup. Yeah, but this is uh, this is the sword we drew, um, and now we come back out in the second half, ready to fight some more. Number 45, Brennan Hayes. So Brennan Hayes set to kick off for Creston. Everyone on your feet for our second half kickoff. Uh, no matter how mat or how cold it is out here. Both sides of the state or of the field chain completely packed full of fans on both sides. Harlan travels well, no matter what game it is. And Creston, and this one will be fielded at about the two. And he's got Eggers, and we got a flag there, but Eggers will be almost to about the 15. So that is not going to bode well for your Cyclones, as he, not much for the return and. A More flag as well. Three. More than likely a block in the back or something. I believe they're calling a hold on the Cyclones. So that'll be half the distance to the goal. So not the start Harlan has wanted in chain. We've seen the, the quick strike offense though. Uh, but Harlan's got a lot of field to to go here to start this offensive drive. Yeah, Harlan starting at about the eight and a half. They'll call it the nine. And we've... As we move it back. Yeah. Okay, so Harlan will start uh, just inside the seven. So Sorfin at receiver, and Francis in the backfield. As and this uh, will get blown up inside the five, Shane, as Lucas Francis could not get away from Creston. Yeah, as uh, that play was read from the get-go, uh, you know, Source gets in there, and they've handed it off every time. It'll be second down. 
So second and 13 from the five. As Harlem, as Arkville will be under center here, and Lucas Francis gets it to the far side this time. And, and he is still fighting. He's going to get bent over backwards. You hope he's all right with a tackle like that, but he gets a big chunk of that back. And again, kind of the, you had the Swarf out there leading the, the block, and this time it was to the far side. Yeah, so gets uh, 11 yards on that carry. Yeah, it's kind of a full backfield here. And As Arkfeld drops gonna it. Drop the snap, and he's going to be in the backfield. So a bad snap from Harlan, and we will see the hunting unit come out, making its first appearance in the game. As Harlan's offense stalls out, now fourth and three. now spotted at the 14 yard line. Yeah, just kind of an unfortunate break there is uh, Arkfeld I don't, may have pulled out too early. Um, just uh, drops the snap, picks it up though at least, so we will have a chance to punt it away. And this will be a short punt for the Cyclones and it'll get a Cyclones bounce at almost the 50 just inside the Harlan territory here at the 48. So Creston gets some good field position to start with. Uh, this Harlan defense gonna have to come up with something big. So first and 10 ball in the, we got a little snap there, but and there's going to be a flag as, as Hayes is going to score. The end zone. Close, nope, out at the one. Nope. Okay. They're going to call it a touchdown. Call it a touchdown. However, uh, that's going to come all the way back as Hayes just running out some energy. <laughs> yes. You can kind of see once uh, I think Harlan had the idea that there's a flag in a play, you let him run out the play. But more than likely, this is a hold on Creston. Holding penalty on the offense. So that will back it up to first and 20. Um, unlucky break for the Panthers. As it erases a big, big run play. And Harlan uh, gets away with one there. Now on the 47, on Crescent's own 47. First and 20. And Turner looks to throw. He's got some time, gonna get flushed out to the far side. And just incomplete. That's off the hands. And unfortunately, there's no cycling there. Yeah, that was Tyler Riley on that uh, attempted pass. Just couldn't bring it down as Turner fired it in there. He did. Uh, having a great season for Creston. Uh, really kind of Harlan's big lock has been Turner and Hayes this game. So uh, second and 20, ball in the 47. As this will be a keeper and incomplete as we finally get something on that play, Shane. Yeah, Harlan uh, finally getting in good position on that play. Looks like the defensive staff made some good adjustments there. Uh, kind of got to Turner a little bit early, maybe force that off the timing off a little bit, but nonetheless now third and 20 for the Panthers. And, and this is where uh, Harlan's got to keep some safeties back. 
as Turner is looking to throw. He's got Van Bala. And he drops Van the ball. On the Harlan gets onto the fumble. Harlan's Van Bala. Van Bala with the pressure, <laughs> forcing uh, Turner to panic and drop the ball. And he did that with one hand, Shane, as he has a club on the other one. Yeah, uh, you know, you watch Van Bala coming off that edge. They had someone there to block him, and uh, Van Bala just said, uh, see you later, I'm going through you. <laughs> so Harlan gets a big turnover here in the third quarter, 9-0-1 to play, trailing 28-21 and giving the momentum right back to this Harlem Cyclone team. And that's not what you want, Shane, if you're if you're a Panther. Yeah, again, the Panthers had flipped momentum, got the big stop coming out of half. And uh, we'll see this quick to rise as he's going to get about stiff one. arm one guy, but get tackled right away. He gets one or two. Um, but yeah. Creston had the momentum, and Harlan just kind of said, give it right back. Right. Shane, if you're, if you're Creston, you're going to – it's one of those things where it's like how, how much longer is this team going to stick around and how much do you keep giving this Harlan team that's just not going away. And I do believe Harlan's going to start outlasting them. Yeah, Brian, this is a, definitely a team and program you cannot let just hang around. As Ark felt going to keep the option here. And Art they'll get Feld maybe a short gain. With a carry on second down for the Cyclones. Yeah, Ark Feld didn't really have anything there. He had an early pitch to Francis. Um, chose to keep it, which you, you ought to love the safe play, especially in a game with this kind of implications. Right. Uh, game of this magnitude chain it, he had a pitch late too if he wanted to but you really uh, wanted to you just got to keep it yeah you can't you can't uh be so careless careless with the football yeah that's the word i was looking for <laughs> so third and eight ball in the 38 for the cyclones arcville in the shotgun and he'll look to the air he's got rise there at the sticks i don't know if he's at and the he's sticks gonna be short, but he's yeah. gonna fight for it He's probably about a yard short. And a lot of back and forth, Shane, as uh, Preston is side is not happy about something. Uh, it looked like Rise kind of uh, was a little aggressive getting up. And this offense stays on the field, facing a fourth and two, ball in the 32. Again, this, this game seems to be getting chippy. It's kind of started with that last touchdown for Creston before the half. Uh, sounds like maybe some words are being exchanged between players. And this would be a late pitch to Francis, and he's going to get just to the first. No, he's short. Oh, he's going to be short, yep. So that's something, Shane, you'd like to see cut trying back to, up. Trying to get the edge. Um, Looked like maybe a horse collar tackle. I couldn't really see it from here as the players for the Cyclones are in the way. Uh, but he's going to be stopped uh, about an inch short, it looked like. And Shane, that was kind of the same play that sealed it for Harlan last time when we were here to the 25-22. But now back with this Harlan defense that's answered the call every time we need a big stop. Now, first and 10, ball in the 34 for Creston. This will be Brennan Hayes up the middle. And he's still on his feet, past the 40. And Jackson Beaker gets him at about the 25. So a big run play for Creston. Coming off the turnover on downs. Creston putting the pressure on this Harlan defense early. Yeah, as this Harlan defense has to start filling that hole up the middle. So now, ball in the 24, first and 10. As this will be Brendan Hayes again, and gets hit early, but rolls forward. It's about two or three on that one. So second and seven. Ball on the 21. Spotted at the 21 yard line. 
as Turner almost drops it off a fake, but it'll be complete inside the five. And it looks like he's out at about the two or three. Uh, Turner uh, bobbled that on the yeah. little fake. I'm not sure if his old man ran into there or, or what, but gathered it up and, and threw a dart in there and got it down to the three yard line for Creston. So first and goal. And Creston will hand it to Brendan Hayes and he has stopped. Maybe one on that carry. So just under five to go here in the third quarter. Second and goal for the Panthers. And this will be Brendan Hayes, and he's gonna get met at the line. A big goal line stop there, Shane. I think he might have lost a yard there. And surprise, surprise, Shane. Matthew Sorfenden in there for the stop. So third and two, well, third and goal from the two. Yeah, it's third and goal, Shane. Catching a case of the Martins here. <laughs> as we got the Wildcat, as Brendan Hazel more likely keep it and he's in for the touchdown so touchdown Creston so not the not the spot you want to be in as a cyclone um, going back down 14 uh, potentially We've been down there before and came back, Shane. But uh, late in the third quarter, Creston giving up, or Harlan giving up a touchdown. And this one's just good. I tell you what, Landon Kaufman's getting dangerously close to those. <laughs> this might be the first game we have yet to see a, a not a blocked kick or extra point as Harlan now trails 35-21. That drive by Creston had a lot of up and ups and downs, Shane. Yeah, they manufactured that touchdown, uh, some close calls and stuff, but that big run by Hayes is kind of what set them up. As your cycling, still very much in this game. Uh, they've yeah, we still got a lot of fight in them. They've still got a lot of time, even. Yeah, uh, four ten left to go here in the third quarter. You still have about sixteen minutes combined, and Harlan is down fourteen early. Shane came back, tied it. Preston has momentum now, but uh, Harlan's quick strike offense can change that story real quick. This will be returned about the six, and they'll get past the 20. Right, here we go. Come on, come on. With the return for the Cyclones. Trap on the tackle. Cyclones will take over first, so first and 10, and ten ball in the 23, 23 for the Cyclones. And I'm not saying, Shane, we need to kind of hurry up and score, but we have to put some points up on the board on this drive. And this will be a touch pass to uh, Lucas Francis, and he's got the side, and he's... Off to the races, Shane, past the 50. And I don't and think I anyone's don't think gonna he, catch him. He's gonna go all the way, touchdown Harlan. So just like that, Harlan keeps it within one point, yeah. or one score. 77 yard touchdown <laughs> uh, pass for Will Arkfeld on that one. As it looks like a handoff, but because of the touch pass, it's going in, in the stats as a passing touchdown. <laughs> It's the easiest pass he'll complete as a quarterback. Yeah, great great play call and great blocking by the Cyclone offense. Yeah, and uh, Shane, like we said, once you get Lucas Francis the edge and he makes it to the edge, he's he's gone 99% of the time. Yeah, I, again, I'm not sure anyone's going to catch him uh, unless, uh, I mean, I hate to say it, but unless Brennan Hayes is on the defense, and that is off the upright. 
So Schwery, who's been consistent all year, uh, just kind of doinks this one, unfortunately. Now it is 35-27 as Harlan misses the extra point, but still within striking distance, Shane down eight. Yeah, again, a uh, big momentum shift for Harlan, getting it right back on that uh, long touchdown pass. I keep wanting to call it a run because it looks <laughs> like a handoff. So now we're going to need this Harlan defense to step it up again, maybe force another turnover as Briley and Trapp are back to return. And just like and the first game was advertised, Shane, the playoff game was just as bad, just as good. I mean, yeah, and I mean, again, you wish for warmer weather for these things. <laughs> but uh, neither team really letting it affect them too much. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the only people it's affecting us, it's, it's us, Shane. Uh, yeah. You can kind of hear it in our voice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's going to be a nice car ride home for sure, but uh, this defense will go to work on the 36. It'd be first and 10 for Creston. And you're wondering how much you have to do to put this cycling team away. It just you go up 14 and then blink of an eye, back to eight. Yeah, Harlan just keeps coming back with the answer. And Brandon Hayes up the middle, and he'll be. Looks like he got about five. five. Jinx, you owe me a coke. <laughs> got it. I'll take it. Oh, we were both wrong. It was six. I knew I should have should have <laughs> went with a different number. <laughs> so second and four, ball in the 42. Turner back to throw. He's got some time. And they're gonna. Yep, he's going deep. And, and this is a fair. Uh, he catches it, but Brian, let me back. tell you, it's coming back as uh, they decided to hold Van Valla in the backfield. Yeah, they they were bear hugging him. Shane, it wasn't. That was probably the. Uh, not the calmest hold I've ever seen, but that's two drives in a row, Shane. They've had big plays right away, called back from a hold, and Harlan catches a break again. So right now you gotta wonder if it's uh, just the mental focus that Creston's kind of losing, not used to being here in this situation. Um, you know, being the number one team, being in the playoffs, uh, lead on Harlan in the playoffs, uh, just kind of mental mistakes. Yeah, and uh, it just takes some, uh, like we saw, quick strikes from Harlan, and they can they can bury you on the scoreboard. And be a nice pass there in the middle for Creston, and they're going to get almost the first down. Yeah, a little tunnel screen to Briley, and uh, he either got the first down or was about an inch short. They are giving him the They're first give down. Him the first down. On the tackle for the Cyclones. It's good for a Panther, first down. As Sorfenden laid the lumber on him to take him down finally, but he uh, spun and juked his way to a first down. First and 10, ball on the 46, as they'll keep it on the ground here. And Hayes will get just past the 50. Yeah, Kester's coming up with good run support and making the tackle short of the first down. Carries it on first down for seven yards. Coaster brings it down at the 47 yard line. Second down and three. Go on, D! Come on! Get in that line! So second and three, ball in the 47, just over two to go. This will be Brennan Hayes up the middle, and he'll be just short. Nah, they're, they're gonna, gonna give it to him. So that'll be another first down, and Shane, he's, he'll be feeling these hits in the morning for sure. Yeah, they are not going light on him, uh, especially when he's taking it up the middle, but uh, I don't know if Turner's having some cold hands issues or what, but he is having trouble all catching some of these snaps. That one he bobbled as well. To look to throw to the far side and incomplete. That's good defensive play there from 
Harlan. Yeah, Landon Nissen on the backside of that, punching and that away. Secondary uh, tonight, Shane, has just been very, very uh, on it on knocking them out of the hands. I think they've only lost two kind of toss-up plays here, but more than likely this Harlan secondary really keying in on getting the hand in there and knocking the ball out. So second and 10, ball in the 43. And Turner's going to keep it, and he's got some room, and he'll get the first down and more. Yeah, again, that's one that's so hard to read uh, as you never know if he's going to throw it outside. As a late sub for the Cyclones, uh, Quinn Kester's needed to come out and take a break. And this will be Hayes again up the middle for about four. Hayes with the carry. Yes, Kester is actually getting looked at here on the sideline. So that's what you want to see if you're a Cyclone fan. That's uh, another big key player on defense. So second and five, ball in the 22. As Turner looks to throw, as ball is going to chase him, and he's going to get, he's going to slip, but still, and Soma is going to get to him. And a big sack from the Cyclone. Yeah, we're looking at about a 20-yard sack there, Brian, <laughs> as uh, Turner just trying to do a little too much there. I would have thrown it away if I was Turner, but Soma relentless on the on the pass rush and just kind of like pushed him over, Shane. And yeah, and again, uh, that's something also Creston might need to watch out for. Kale Turner hanging the ball out there. Lucky Soma didn't get a paw on that okay. to hit it out of his hand. As he had, that ball had him about five yards back, but fell down and Turner trying to make something out of nothing now. Third and 24. Yeah, 19 yard sack there. As this will be the last play of the third quarter. They're gonna go deep. And they're going to get a play, a flag on the play for pass interference on Jackson Beaker. Yeah, unfortunately, with an underthrown ball, uh, that's generally going to get called. Yep. Uh, don't want to uh, kind of go for sides here, but once Crescent saw the underthrow as a receiver, all you got to do is turn around. And that's exactly what he did. It's going to be a pass interference on the Cyclones. So that will be an automatic first down, I believe. I'm not sure, because it was kind of wonky the last time we were here, too, with <laughs> flags and whatnot. Maybe it's not. No. It'll be a 15-yard. It, it's, it's just a 15-yard penalty. It's still third down. So, so one untimed down in the It'll be third, third and quarter. Third and ten. Harlan needs a big stop here. So these Cyclones trying to fire this crowd up. You love hearing the crowd over here behind them. Yeah, kind of sounds like a home game here, Shane. And, and this would be a bad snap. And Shane, you called it. He's got some cold hands there, and he puts it on the ground. You know, I'm not sure what it is. He's got the hand warmer on him. Uh, he just can't seem to get it right catching the snap right now. So at the end of the fourth quarter, it's 35-27. They'll switch sides. We'll switch sides maybe just kidding we, we won't switch sides but we will take a break while they take a break Back to HLTV Channel 15, start of the fourth quarter, fourth and 14 for the Panthers. Offense stays on the field. And Turner looks to throw. Harlow's going to get in there, but he's still on his feet, and he's just going to throw it away. So a turnover on downs for Creston. And Turner gets planted by Sorfenden after the pass. 
Hey, that's another thing we've seen from him all season is uh, he lets the quarterbacks know. Yeah, Hazy doing a good job filling uh, the backside, not leaving anywhere for him to run up the middle, and then Sorf uh, just chasing him down and laying the lumber. So first and 10 for the Cyclones, ball to 32. And this offense taking over, and they had a quick strike last time, Shane, and you're gonna need it again. Again, this is not a Cyclone team you can let hang around. That no. will come back to bite you. Especially a quick strike here, Shane, uh, giving Harlan the momentum in the fourth quarter that it would almost be a wrap almost. So short play clock, gonna have to get this play off. And Arkfeld looks to throw. He's got Eggers in the middle and just out of reach again. Same throw. Uh, Eggers just looks like he's judging it so well. Uh, if he dove, maybe he catches it, but uh, such a good route and good play, good ball. Um, unfortunately, just not in his hands. Oh. And Shane, do you blame him for not diving because uh, it's going to feel like concrete out there? I, I don't blame him for not diving. Again, <laughs> that's uh, one, I, I want to see him extend, get the fingertip catch, and be able to take it into the end zone because that route twice, he's got the defender beat yeah. for a touchdown. So second and 10 now, ball on the 32 after the incompletion. Arkfeld looks to put it in the air again, and he's going to dump it off here to, I believe, at Sorf. And... He's going to be down past the first down. That's a gain of 12, I believe. Yeah, Sorf with a nice little catch on the screen and bowls a couple defenders over in the process. Anytime he's out there, Shane, I feel like he just looks for contact. Yeah, you are not wrong. You <laughs> can, It's almost like he sees the defender and he's like, I could go around him, but I'll go through him. <laughs> it's a lot funner to go through a defender. So first and 10 for the Cyclones, ball in the 45. We have Sorf here to the near side. And this will be Luke. Oh, as this will be a pump fake as he's got. Oh, no. And just a dropped interception by Creston. And Shane, uh, we kind of heard you say, oh, no, there. That was a very underthrown ball from Will Arkfeld. And that could have been picked, but drops it. He had Sorf there open, just didn't. It, it's a ball we don't see him throw much anymore. He just gets a little too much air under it. Uh, he had Sorf early and uh, just waited a little long yeah. on it. We actually saw him uh, tell him to go farther, and then he goes over or underthrows him. And Harlan looks out there after a dropped interception. Leads it to second and 10. Ball in the 45. Harlan in the eye formation now. They'll keep it on the ground. And this will be about five yards. I think it's going to be about six. Whatever. <laughs> so a six-yard gain for Francis on the carry. Uh, Brian's just eating the losses yeah. tonight. Oh, oh, for four. Oh, for everything. <laughs> Oh, for all year. Third and four, though. Ball in the 49. Arkfeld in the shotgun. Schmidt lined up next to him. Arkfeld's going to put it in the air, though. He's kind of running. He's got Sears there for the first and down. And Sears hauls it in. And he's, he's slow, slow to get up. Again, uh, and he's down. Jane. Love that he's selling out for the team, but uh, you hate to see a kid go down. So that's enough for the first down, Shane, but at what cost? It will cost us number 14. As he's in a lot of pain. Yeah, obviously still injuring, it, dealing with that injury he picked up uh, earlier in the season. But uh, all for, all for uh, a first down, Shane, so a huge first down for the Cyclones. That is first and 10. And this will be Lucas Francis, maybe for three. Francis with the carry on first down. Jack Walter, among other Panther players. So that will actually be a one yard gain, Brian. <laughs> Again, Harlan's just not going to get the spots here. No. Uh, it looked like it could have been three. <laughs> um, but 
uh, Iowa State probably why I've been, I've been that's wrong not, all season. That's not why, but uh, <laughs> we'll let you hang your hat on that. So second and nine ball in the 39. Art fell under center as he's going to look through the air, and he's going to keep it himself and get out of bounds pretty close to the first down. Yeah. Looks like he got about a yard short of the first down. Uh, okay, never mind. Got no. <laughs> about four yards away from the first down. Wow. Good good pull and run by Will. Um, definitely thought he got a lot closer than that, but nonetheless, here we are, second and, well, third and four. So Arkfelt looks to be under center and loading up the backfield as this will be Lucas Francis will cut back inside he's got enough for the first he does and let me tell you he is running with some steam uh, <laughs> he went through about three or four arm tackles there Shane, we're seeing number 14 trot back out on the field. Yeah, again, uh, you love to see the fight in him. You just hope he's not putting himself out there for more of an injury. It's first and 10 ball in the 30. 8 40 to play here in the fourth quarter. And this will be Joseph Rice, and he's going to go backwards, Shane. And you don't like seeing that, but that'll be complete for three. I mean, it was first down, so at least he still gained some yards. Um, but yeah, you gotta, gotta just turn north and south there. Yeah, uh, second and seven. As uh, Creston timed a blitz really well right there, so fortunate to get the pass off. Ball in the 27, just over eight to go here in the game, Shane. As every down is going to be a crucial one. And this will be Lucas Francis, and he's going to go up the middle. And he's just running with straight gas out there, Shane. Yeah, no change-ups here. <laughs> so third and four as Bendorf comes up limping. Yeah, you, we haven't really seen a lot of him late in the game here tonight. Uh, the fullback stretch, Shane has kind of uh, been on the back burner as Harlan's had to put it in the air most of the game, and both offenses have just kind of thrown haymakers all game. So third and four, Ark felt looking to put it in the air again as he'll get sacked. That's nothing going for the Cyclones there on that play. He had to, instead of throwing it in danger, he just had to kind of eat the sack. Yeah, again, uh, Creston just timing their blitzes really well, calling them really well. Um, I mean, he was basically a free runner there shooting the gap. So under seven to go here. Harlan, a crucial fourth and 13. Shane, I don't know if uh, they don't get this. It's if this is the game or not, but nonetheless, a big fourth down for the Cyclones. Arkfeld looking in the air, or looks to throw in the air, It'll be rushed to the far side, throws it in the end zone. He's got Kaufman, and that'll be incomplete. I thought he came down with that, Shane, but he had his hands on it, but took a hit right as his hands hit the ball, and they jarred it loose. So a turnover on down for the Cyclones. And this defense has to come up big here to give Harlan's offense one more chance. Yeah, Shane, I have a feeling we're going to see a heavy dose of haze. Yeah, um, I, if, you know, if you're, if you're wanting to guess, I'm guessing we're going to see a lot of that read option little flare out pass. And this is going to be Hayes up the middle, enough for the first down. They're actually going to mark him about a yard short or two. Oh, wow. Okay. One yard. One yard short. 
That's a first here. <laughs> no, it's second down. <laughs> I'm done with you. <laughs> so second and one, ball in the 42. As this will be Hayes again, and he's got it. Plenty for the first down, almost to the 50. Hayes with the carry. Van Bell with the carry. So That's Bryce Van Ball on the tackle there. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's just going to be a heavy dose of Brennan Hayes here. And this will be him again right up the middle. Just good enough for a couple yards, but good enough to keep that clock moving. Yeah, and right now that's uh, that's what Creston needs is this clock moving down. Up 35-27, anything to keep Harlan's offense off the field because Harlan's dangerous quick strike offense, Shane, can really bite him as if you give him any time. Second and eight, this will be Hayes again. He's gonna go to the far side. He's got the first down and more. And maybe out of bounds, Shane. He did go out of bounds. So that's at least a benefit, stops the clock, but uh, it is a first down uh, deeper into Harlan's territory. With five minutes to go here in the game. And Shane, what a game it's been, 35-27. I did not predict this score coming in. <laughs> yeah, uh, I did not think it would be kind of a shootout here. No. Uh, the way the weather and everything is, I was expecting a 17-10 type of football game. Uh, but Turner's going to keep it here to the near side, and he's just going to slide down, and probably a smart choice there as you had Van Bala ready to lay the lumber on him. Yeah, the slide I think was mainly just to stay in bounds and keep the clock running. I mean, and to avoid... Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you never want to take the hit, but uh, again, he had his momentum going towards the sideline. I'm pretty sure Harlan was going to look to push him out. So second and nine, ball in the 35, and this will be Turner on the keeper, and he'll be... Yeah. Yep. In the backfield, it's Joseph, Joseph Rice. Rice uh, with a good read there. And we're going to get a late flag. As I'm not really sure. And they're going to they're gonna call a unnecessary roughness or unsportsmanlike on Harlan. Uh, looked like a Creston player tripped Turner. over Harlan or something. Not, not exactly sure, but it will be on Harlan. Yep. As that's a great acting job by the Creston Panthers to draw the flag. So it'll be a first down on the 18, Shane. So inside the red zone, just under four minutes to go as Creston looks to kind of put this game away here late in the fourth quarter. As Hayes will get met in the backfield, though, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Brett Hayes with a carry on first down. As Brett Hazy in there is just playing uh, really well right now. He's reading everything. Saw him stop that little read option flare pass, and now reading Hayes on that carry. Second and ten, ball in the 18. Marlon Sneefens needs to come up big here. As this will be an incomplete uh, pass. I, they're they're going to call it a catch. Uh, okay. It definitely hit the ground, but they are <laughs> calling it a catch. As, well, we wait until late in the game to start getting the, the bad calls here, Shane. Nope, they did call it incomplete. As, okay, as we get a, a little break here, Shane, as I say we saw the ball dribble to the hand there. Yeah, I saw at least one bounce into the arms. It was close, don't get me wrong. Well, on, um, on turf, Shane, you can't really hide anything. Right, right. you see the beads come up. Um, but not only is that a good stop for the Cyclones, it stops the clock. So third and 10, ball in the 18. 3.09 to go here in the game. The 
look to throw, and it'll be, this one will be complete just past the sticks. Is it past? Is it is no, not. It is not. Two yards short. It's, this is a tough angle. I'll give you that one, Brian. <laughs> I would say it looks like he laid past the sticks to me, but yeah, we're in the corner of the, of the stands here. Not sure what they're doing. Uh, I, it, they're probably going with a QB sneak or something. I, I may go with a uh, field goal here. Fourth and one. As and they're going to get flag. some kind of flag on the Panthers, I believe. There's a penalty marker on the play. As uh, the official was pretty quick to go on that flag. He saw it coming a mile away, apparently. Maybe illegal formation or I'm, something. I'm guessing illegal formation. Yeah. As it will be. So, I mean, at this point, Brian, you got to think they'll trot the field goal unit on to make it a two-score game. You would think so. Uh, I'm not sure if they're thinking that. They're thinking they're looking at the time, maybe 2.29 left to go. Uh, first down here seals it, but now it's a fourth and six instead of a fourth and one. Uh, but we also, I mean, I, I, Brennan Hayes is your kicker. Yeah, no, I mean, officials still talking. Not, not really sure what's going on. as we will see the clock start. I'm guessing Creston just gonna let this play clock wind down and then trot the field goal unit on. And then that'll probably be almost about two minutes left to go in the game, pending the field goal. There's a timeout for the Panthers. So, about two minutes to go here in the game, Shane. Fourth and six, like you said, more than likely we'll see a field goal. And Shane, that kind of is what it came down to. The first game was three points. Yep. So this will be a, a big, big field goal attempt. Yeah, Brennan Hayes uh, hit a field goal to give him the 25-22 lead. And uh, right now, you got to imagine that's what they're going to go with. It's not a straight-on kick, though. No. Uh, yeah, it's he's on the, the near, near hash, side. so um, he's at least going to have to get the angle right on the kick. And Shane, we've kind of hit on it early. Landon Kaufman's coming off the edge, and he's almost getting there every single extra point. Yeah, uh, you just worry if he's going to get it timed right, um, because it seems like these officials are itching to throw flags now. <laughs> uh, let him play all game until comes down to uh, crunch time here. Now they want to be part of the game. So we are looking at a field goal attempt here for Creston. As the kick is good for no, oh, it's, it's short. short. As he fell short. <laughs> It looked good, but uh, he fell right in front of the field goal. Yeah, that looked like that was going straight through, and that ball just died in the <laughs> air. I'm not sure if we had the late gust of wind, Shane, but first and 10 for the Cyclones. Ball in the 14. Harlan gets one more chance. Three, three timeouts to work with as well, so the entire playbook is open. Uh, but Hayes coming up short on the, I believe, 31-yard field goal. Yeah, uh, like you said. It looked good. I don't know if just that late gust of wind. That little, Har fell. The little Harlan magic. Uh, <laughs> just fell right in front of the goalpost. So Harlan needing eight points to tie this one up. And they got a lot of field to go, Shane. 80 yards to be exact to tie this game up. Arc fell under center. As he's going to look, he's got Sears and just incomplete as off the back shoulder of Sears, and that could have been a huge completion for the Cyclones. Yeah, Sears uh, dealing with that 
foot, leg, whatever injury it is, uh, still showing speed to get behind the defense. He had about two steps on that defender there, Shane, just uh, a back shoulder pass that I don't think he was expecting. Yeah, again, it was just a hard one. He had to twist and contort his body to even get what he got on it. Um, unfortunate incompletion, but still, still got a chance. So second and 10 for the Cyclones. Arkfeld looking to the air. He's going to sail it to Eggers. And Eggers Eggers. trying to draw the flag. Uh, I didn't see much there. No. Uh, again, Har Harlan's got to got to maybe tone it down a little bit. They don't need it in one chunk. No, you don't want to give any kind of time left. Uh, now you're going to have to get a first down. And uh, you have enough time here to, to manage it, run the two-minute offense, Shane. Uh, but now it's third and ten, ball on the 20. Harlan's got to get something going. It's Arkfeld looking to the air again. He's got Eggers and well overthrown. Eggers looking for a flag. Yeah, they uh, they called a double move. Um, Eggers got held. No <laughs> question about it. He got held. And the side judge uh, said didn't see it. Now it is fourth and ten. Ball in the 24. The Cyclones, 140 left. And Shane, this is basically their season right here. I think Barlow's just going to run her, the play clock down, burn her timeout, and really think about it. And that's exactly what they'll do. Yeah, they got to come with something good. So third and ten, or yeah, fourth and ten when we come back. As Coach Blatt is giving that ear, ref an earful. And we'll take a little timeout here before we get to the possibly conclusion of this game. You're watching HLTV Channel 15. Local Cyclone coverage on HLTV Channel 15 is brought to you by Keist Auto Center in Harlan, Iowa. Hanson House Senior Living. Experience life, experience Hanson House. Conducting Swampler is a proud supporter of the Harlan community, education, and student activities. We move your business forward. United Bank of Iowa. The difference is here. Member FDIC. Holly Jones Funeral Home, longtime supporter of Harlan Community Athletics and events. We're your station for Western Iowa sports. Cool Goal 105.3 FM, Tano D in Harlan, Iowa. Family, service, community, SCSB. Dr. J's Family Eye Care, longtime supporter of Cyclone Sports in Harlan. Peterson Family Wellness Center and Lewis Family Aquatic Complex, live well. Cyclone Lanes, great family entertainment, including bowling, sandwiches, and homemade buttercrust pizzas. Welcome back to HLTV Channel 15. Harlan trots back out on the field, facing a fourth and 10, ball on the 20, Shane, a huge fourth down. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what Harlan draws up here. As Yeah, they need 10, and they need it. As uh, They're down to two timeouts, so... Uh, Maybe can muster a possession if they don't get it, but it's still going to be tough. Arkfeld looks to the air. He's got a nice little uh, Statue of Liberty play there. L she. Little hook and ladder to Joseph Rise out here looking like the Kansas City Chiefs with <laughs> Travis Kelsey. So that was enough to move the chains, and he gets out of bounds, the most important thing. So first and ten. So Harlan... Sigh of relief for a moment with 131 to go here. Uh, what a play to draw up there on a fourth and 10, ball on the 20. Yeah, again, I'll say, I've said it once, I'll say it again. This is not a team you can let hang around. No. As Arkfeld looks to throw, and oh my lord, and what a hit that was from Preston as Landon Kaufman gets lit up after catching that one. Yeah, uh, that Creston defensive back uh, made an early break on that and said hello to Landon. 
aggressively. Yeah, second and five. And unfortunately, he stayed in bounds. The clock's still moving. Just over a minute. And we got laundry on the field. They got too many men on the field. Ah, uh, yeah, it looks like they broke the huddle with 12 people. And it will be 12 men on the field for Harlan. And if you're new to football, you're only supposed to have 11. We'll make it a second down and 11. So instead of a second six, we're looking at a second and 11. Under a minute, 56 seconds to go. And Shane uh, Todd Blatt is irate on the sideline. So uh, all that commotion is going to force a timeout from Coach Blatt as he is uh, ripping into the official, maybe the team. For the second time, <laughs> Shane, uh, the very first one. Uh, yeah, you really hate seeing this. It's coming down, a great game coming down to a lot of refs not making the right calls here. It's not necessarily not the right calls. It's just they're very inconsistent. They're either calling it or they're not calling it. And it's no, no real, like, this is the foul every time. This is not the foul every time. As Shane, this is a... Almost a back and forth with the crowds. Uh, Creston over there not happy. Harlan's been not happy. Uh, very a, uh, a hostile environment right now. Both teams wanting to go on to the next week. I, I don't. I don't know what's going on for sure. Uh, it looks like we are getting back the five yards. Uh, as maybe uh, Coach Black called a timeout or something. I'm not. I, again, I have no idea. We're not getting an explanation no. for the officials. Uh, um, Whatever he pleaded, he pleaded the, the right case. He gets the five yards back. Second and six. No timeout charge, Shane. So kind of just a straight butt chewing. <laughs> yeah, again, uh, just the blat intimidation factor, it seems like. <laughs> uh, wish it would have worked the first time, but nonetheless, here we go. Harlan gets the five yards back. It was always second down. Okay, there we go. Yeah, the announcer now back to second down. It was always second down, just a matter of yardage. So second and six, ball to 37. As this will be a touch pass to Lucas Francis. And he'll get maybe two. And he did not get out of bounds. Uh, so it'll be a timeout, Harlan. Harlan will use their second. Yeah, so uh, Creston obviously running the scoreboard, lets a few extra seconds tick off, and uh, here we are, third and about four. As Blatt still. I think still he's just joined. getting some confirmation right now. I, th I think he just wanted to know that maybe he had that last time out still. Again, without the explanation from the officials, this is very confusing up here. <laughs> it is. Uh, it just it was a straight up discussion. Yeah. Uh, nothing was charged. Time stopped. You got about a, f a five minute conversation out there. I didn't know what was happening. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to need uh, IHSAA to uh, <laughs> Put in a request for mic'd up officials so I can get some explanations. I don't know if you wanted to be mic'd up on that one. <laughs> no. I just want them to have a mic so they can turn it off and turn it off. That's right. So second and six. Ball in the 37 for the Cyclones as we still got about five seconds left with the timeout clock. So 48 seconds left to go in the game. Harlan still with one timeout, third and four. Ball on the 40. As Arkfeld looks to throw, he's going to get Kaufman again past the sticks. So that'll be a first down, and Kaufman takes a massive hit again, and this time he's down. So... Uh, 
clock would stop to move the sticks anyways, but uh, we're going to have an injury timeout. Unfortunately, Kaufman a little slow to get up. He's taking some hard hits. As Kaufman is gingerly walking off the field, uh, you're hoping he's okay as he's been a pretty integral part of this team. So first and 10, ball to 48 for the Cyclones. Clock keeps moving. And Arkville will be hit as he throws, intercepted. And that be should down do it at for the, the 20. game. But unfortunately, that'll be it for the game as now we got a flag for unsportsmanlike, more than likely. Yeah, unfortunately, that uh, is not really going to matter. And we have more Harlan players down. As I'm not really sure what player that is, but uh, he's trying to get up and not able to. So it'll be Creston's ball, Shane, first and 10 with 22 seconds to go here. Unfortunately, Shane, we're looking at the end of Harlan's uh, 2023 season unless something crazy happens. Yeah, again, hats off to this Cyclone team as they fought till the end. Um, again, Creston just coming with a good blitz on that play. Arkfeld hit as he throws and right into the Panthers' waiting arms. Yeah, you got to, I mean, you got to try to make those plays, Shane. Nothing against Arkfeld, nothing against anything. Uh, like you said, just a well-timed blitz. I mean, it's, it's from his blind side. He can't see it coming. Uh, he was making the right play. He was going downfield with the ball. Uh, just an unfortunate end. And uh, and what a game this was, Shane. But uh, I know me and you both uh, would like the score to be switched. Um, but it looks like as of right now, Harlan will lose 35-27. And Creston will move on to next week. Again, unless something something crazy happens. <laughs> as the Harlan player is up and taking the long way around the field. So the penalty on the on the field chain was more than likely unsportsmanlike contact. It, it was unsportsmanlike conduct. Um, uh, the entire bench is on the field. So. Yeah, Creston's been flirting with that line since that uh, touchdown in the first half. And uh, there's nothing wrong with winning, but there's a right way to do it and a wrong way. And uh, Unfortunately, when uh, you face Harlan, Shane, it's, it's always the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. As this will be a knee from Turner, and that'll be it. Uh, more than likely as Preston will win 35-27. And Shane, what a season this was for the Cyclones. I know 6-3 and three regular season. Nothing to really brag about, but the way Harlan was injured this year, the way we came back, the way we fought, and put the number one team on their heels tonight and just came up short. Yeah, again, congratulations to all the Cyclones. Uh, congratulations to Creston. Good luck the rest of the year. Um, and we'll be back next year. Yeah, Shane, it's been a, been a pleasure. First year, you in the booth. Second year, me in the booth. Uh, can't wait for next year and do it again. So thank you for tuning in to HLTV Channel 15, and we'll catch you next time.